Okay, so Farid's already started introducing himself, so let's go home. Yeah. So, uh, you need a Node.js add-on. Oh, it's uh, kind of fast. Um, because um, you might need more performance in Node.js. Or um, you have a native library that um, you want to, uh, you want it to be used in uh, different languages. For example, uh, Ruby, Python, and then you write... Um, um, bindings for that library of yours or you want more freedom in memory management or um, you might even use um, you might even want to use some low level APIs in your application and well in Node.js you just can't without the proper binding or you don't even like JavaScript but that's not a good reason alright so how to write a Node.js add-on well, I searched it and C++ shows up not a fan and um, I hope you are not a fan of C++, because uh, um, this is a Rust room. So I found Neon. Neon is a project to um, bring uh, Rust and Node.js closer. Well, it helps you to write bindings. So it's uh, quite easy to get started with. Um, I, this is not very visible, but um, you could um, install the CLI from NPM and... Uh, you can easily create a new project with Neon, um, new. And then um, it will tell you that, hey, this is uh, your uh, JavaScript file and this is your Rust file. Now they're connected. So this is an example of a Rust file that, um, that uh, exports a module to, um, to Node.js. Um, so this is, um, this is the example that Neon actually gives you. Uh, it's quite simple. What it does is just um, returns a hello node string. And then um, on the other side, you can see on the JavaScript side on the right, um, you require the module and you call the hello method. And when you run it, uh, it works. So there is, um, you can see there is a, um, Neon created a register module um, macro, and then um, using that, you can uh, export your functions. And um, at the same time, it also um, it brought the, the JS uh, types that, uh, for example, here we use the JS string. So there is like um, JS null, JS undefined, JS number, so all these things. And um, it, it built this on top of the V8 bindings, which is V8 is a JavaScript engine for Node.js. All right, so talking about performance, so some people say that, um, okay, we want to use this, uh, we want to write in Rust because I think Rust is going to be way faster than uh, Node.js. Um, it's going to be way faster than JavaScript, but do not underestimate JavaScript. You can optimize it. Well, it can be never like Rust, but it can get pretty close sometimes, sometimes. But, but it's also hard to optimize it. So if you're good at JavaScript, it may be better to just um, see, optimize it and if it, see if it matches your um, goals or not. So, and um, whenever you uh, make a call from the, from the JavaScript land to the Rust land, and then uh, the... the V8 uh, has to do a certain um, number of checks, and uh, these things cannot be optimized. Mm, so try to um, avoid it as much as possible. So like um, the best, um, if, 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 you, if you're using the library for performance, and let's say you have a lot of data to be processed, you want to um, send all the data at one shot to, your, to, to the Rust code, process it, and then send it back. So do not call the Rust code from JavaScript multiple times during this, because that will be expensive in terms of performance. So same thing um, goes uh, with uh, interacting JavaScript um, objects from uh, Rust. So in this uh, example, you can see that um, we, we create a new JavaScript object, and then uh, we try to um, set uh, three properties. And this potentially might call the JavaScript code from the Rust, 
because in JavaScript you can set um, setters on objects, and um, this will also be expensive. In fact, uh, I would say for um, setting um, setting properties in objects as much as you can, trying to do it in JavaScript code because V8 will optimize your code, but this is not optimized code anymore. And um, if you have a lot of data, trying to use buffers, which are uh, which is a Node.js data type that um, refers to a space in memory, and um, they are much they are much faster than strings in uh, when you send them to Rust. So um, you saw some this um, call dot scope, and you're probably wondering what is that. Um, why do you have to um, pass it around? So JavaScript is a garbage collected language, and um, V8 um, V8 wants to know that where did you where this object belongs to and which function um, does it belong to. So if that function goes um, out of scope, it can garbage collect that um, those values that were created there. So this uh, call dot scope is um, is the way that um, you hint V8 that hey this uh, for example this string that we are creating it belongs to the function that called it. So you have to uh, pass around call dot scope whenever you create uh, new values. Buffers this is something about them. So like I said, uh, it would be. Um, faster to use um, buffers around rather than strings. Here's a small example of buffers that um, in this example you get um, does this work? Ah, great. So you have um, you can access the, com the arguments of your function that for example is um, exported to JavaScript. Uh, this require makes shows that, uh, that it has the it has that uh, argument, the first argument, and then uh, it will uh, convert it to a JS buffer. So it will, uh, sorry, cast it to JS buffer. So then, uh, once you have your buffer, you want to get your data. You want to get the data out. Well, you have to call this dot grab method, which um, which creates a lock because um, you don't want to be messing around with the data in memory whenever um, Whenever you're in Rust, because assuming that you could be on another thread, and then there is a, there is a JavaScript thread is running, you want to um, acquire a lock and make sure that um, nobody else is touching that data and it is in a custom state. So this uh, grab takes care of that, and then in here you can um, get the data or mute the data. In the then uh, so in this case we are uh, converting to a slice, and then. Um, so just for this example, for the, I, will, I, should, I should also show that how to create a new buffer. So it's uh, quite easy. You just um, pass the scope and then um, the length. So in this case, I wanted to just um, copy this, uh, this buffer that the, it w the, uh, the function was called. So in this case, uh, we just get the size of it. And um, then um, I have to call the grab method again. So it can create a lock, and then in this case we um, we will um, uh, so you put the mute. So then we say that this uh, this argument is going to be muted. Then uh, we just say that copy from slice, which um, which copies uh, that original buffer into it. So then we can um, return that buffer, and then JavaScript um, has that a new buffer around. All right. So classes. Um, so Neon um, created another macro for um, creating um, types. Um, so you can have your own uh, Rust classes in uh, in Neon, and then uh, then you can uh, use them in JavaScript. Have the same um, some methods and some um, some properties on top of them. Maybe you can also have some um, hidden properties there. So um, there is a so neon uh, makes it easy. The, it gives you a, you have to uh, make a uh, init uh, method. 
So with this, um, in that method, you will um, create your object, and then uh, make sure that um, all the arguments for it are there. So this is a, this is a, in, in JavaScript we would call that the constructor. And then here's uh, another method, hello, so which uh, which have um, two arguments, sorry, one, one argument, and then um, which is a name. And then also accesses the this argument in the method, which in JavaScript refers to the the object itself. So which refers to this uh, whole um, greeter object. And um, in this case, um, we also have to use this um, grab method to make sure that um, we can uh, get our um, greeter object and get this um, original string that put, was put there in, from it. So in case, um, and you have to call the grab, so it, uh, it creates a lock around it, make sure it, it's not modified in the, in the JavaScript land. Oh. There is also um, tasks uh, this is for background jobs. So for example, you have uh, some synchronous code that you want to run. You can, uh, you can use tasks. And then it will, uh, it will use the V8 API to create a thread in the background. And um, you can do some heavy computation without blocking the Node.js main, uh, main thread. So uh, in this case, you can, uh, for example, calculate all the Fibonacci numbers. I should have an argument. I forgot that. Um, so you would... Um, have a perform function that um, that you do whatever needs to be done in that thread, and then you will also get a call when it's completed, and then you can uh, convert the results to the JavaScript uh, values in there, or throw an error. And um, running it is quite uh, easy. You just call the schedule task, sorry, schedule method of your um, um, of your object. So there is uh, another tip. There is um, something called um, a project called Nod Neon uh, Serde. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it makes it uh, quite easy to um, write, rust, um, write, um, write code with Neon because it takes care of all the conversion of the arguments and everything. So this is also um, uh, a module that is uh, exported to the Rust land. So you can see that um, it's quite simple uh, Rust code, and it doesn't have any of those. Um, it doesn't have any conversion of the arguments to um, the Rust types and um, back and forth. So. It's quite good. I say try because um, I'm not sure about the, the performance uh, requirements for your project. This might be a little bit slower than, um, than I think it is. Um, and at the same time, uh, it's a new project, so things might go wrong. Um, and sometimes some people are not a fan of abstractions uh, too much. So it might be a little bit too much of an abstraction for you. But um, if you want to just try things out, it's quite good. So, um, who uses Neon? Well, um, I think it's not, uh, it's not very visible, that, but um, in the NPM registry, I, could, um, I did a search, and um, there was more than a few projects, interestingly, use Neon. I was surprised, actually. Um, one of the most interesting ones is... Um, is uh, libsodium, which is um, which is Node.js bindings to Rust sodium, and um, it, it is used in the Wire app, which is uh, which is a messaging app. So that's um, that that's uh, that's and then they are uh, one of the contributors to this um, project, which uh, makes it even more interesting. So aside that, I saw that there are um, there are a few more um, cryptography modules in the, um, that are written with Rust and then exported to um, Node.js, which makes sense because um, 
you probably uh, want to want to do some uh, sensitive stuff uh, in your Rasco that is um, per that has a high performance, and then um, you return your um, buffers to Node.js to be used there. It makes a lot of sense to use Rust to write cryptographic code in JavaScript, in short. So I did, um, there's, um, some, um, there is some compilers and uh, parsers that are written for Rust. And um, this is a good thing because, um, so you would write your own, uh, for example, uh, library. Let's say it's a, it's, a, it's a compiler, and then you would write uh, bindings for it in, uh, in different languages. For example, one for JavaScript, one for um, Ruby, one for Python, one for Java. And then um, you only have to li write your library once, but it can be used everywhere. It also makes sense if you don't like um, all those languages and you want to use your own favorite Rust. Um, so there's a lot of e examples like that with, uh, with C++. For example, um, libsass, which is, um, which is a transpiler for um, converting SAS code to CSS, which, which makes, it, uh, makes it easier for some front-end developers to write in a better language than CSS. And uh, libsass is, uh, is actually in, in written in C++, but it has bindings for all the different languages. So a good example of this kind of um, uh, is this type of library. The, the reason I'm saying that is that um, I'm hoping that you guys are Rust developers, and um, you would um, go on and create some Node.js modules for somebody like me to use. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so talk ended up being a little bit shorter than I thought. Um, so there's um, about the examples. Um, Neon is uh, quite new, so you will uh, go to the website and you will see uh, there is nothing there. Um, so I, I, um, I, there, there is, I, found a f I found a few, and then uh, looking around and trying to um, experiment. So here they are. It would be nice if you, if you ever write any, if you try something and then you could um, add on your examples to, uh, to the Neon example project would be appreciated. So, yeah. Um, any questions? All right. Well, uh, what's the best practice uh, for uh, Rust developers uh, to write uh, JavaScript APIs? And Documentation, is it? And, uh, All right, um, tricky question. Well, there is, um, there is a lot of um, JavaScript projects, and, um, that, and all of them use different tools to... Um, to have um, their own uh, documentation and uh, to build up their uh, website. Mm. So I think um, one of my uh, favorites uh, is um, the JS Talk. I'm uh, sorry, J JS Doc module, in uh, which um, which compiles your code, uh, which uh, compiles your uh, documentation and makes an HTML page from out of it. I might be. I might. It might be like a little bit. Um, in the past, because um, it's it's been a while that I have uh, maintained any project, but I think um, the the thing is that um, if you um, if you if you have a look at uh, some um, a new JavaScript project with all the bells and whistles, and you can have a look around and what tools they use, I think that would be the best. The, that's uh, that's another problem in the JavaScript world that everything changes every year. And uh, me, as a JavaScript developer, I cannot keep up with it. <laughs> so um, I hope I answered your question. Uh, Did you say that the Trivium calls into Rust, which then calls into C? No, no. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's my understanding that I, I might be wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a guess but from the project description that Libsodium is uh, written in Rust. And then the the 
the wire um, messaging app is written in Node.js, and then they use that um, they use the they use the bindings that they wrote for Lipsodium. Um, yeah. Ah, so um, Neon, uh, yeah, sorry. How is it uh, to distribute a Node.js module with, uh, with Neon and ROS bindings in NPM? So Neon takes care of it, luckily. It gives you, um, you, it gives you one, um, one command, Neon build, and it will build your code, and it's uh, ready, ready to be imported from uh, JavaScript. At the same time, you can um, you put your ROS code and your JavaScript code in your project, and then uh, and then in the package.json, you put uh, you put neon build as a installed script. So whenever the package is installed, it will build the build the module, and then you can publish that uh, as an npm project uh, on npm. All right. Um, the other thing, uh, something I forgot to mention, that you would also have to install the Neon CLI as a dependency to your app, and then um, which would be automatically installed whenever whenever your user installs it. But um, Rust wouldn't be installed with it, so you, you have to tell your user that um, install Rust as well. Well, um, you could also um, build uh, build your binaries ahead of time. And then, um, and then download them whenever the project is installed. But um, I'm not sure how that would work out because I, I don't have any experience in uh, building binaries for multiple platforms. Uh, would it be feasible to add a, um, a package on NPM to install Rust so that you, it could be a dependency? Um, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> So he asked, uh, would it be feasible to um, install Rust beside your package when, whenever it's installed? And um, well, the, you, you don't want to mess with the, with the user that they have, they have their own Rust installed. But well, one thing that you could do is that you would, um, you would um, Install the, for example, well, don't don't install it. Have a local binary of Lost downloaded to your um, to, the, to your package uh, folder, and then try to use that. Hopefully, um, you can configure Neon to be uh, smart about it and use that binary instead. Not not sure if, if Neon can you can do that with Neon. Maybe if you um, if you uh, if you mess around with the path um, variable. So yeah, it's it's a kind of um, I guess that's kind of uncharted territory. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, I think we are done with the time. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, so Dave Herman is the original maintainer. So thanks to him, I'm here. Yeah, that's it.